Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Macros are little programs that you can record that automate repetitive tasks for you. They're basically little programs. What a macro does is it records your keystrokes as you perform some sort of task routine and saves your keystrokes as a visual basic module, which is a type of small program. When you play back the macro later, it will repeat your keystrokes, thus repeating your actions. This is why they're great for instantly performing menial tasks. For example, pretend you wanted to place your name and company's information in the upper left cell in a spreadsheet. You could use a macro to record your keystrokes as you create it once, and then just run the macro in the future. It will repeat the exact same keystrokes that you entered, effectively repeating the process. You use the macro recorder to record your macros, and while you're recording macros, you can't use your mouse very much, and it's recommended that you try to minimize your mouse movements while using the macro recorder. So try to use the keyboard for movement and data entry as much as possible. To start recording a macro, select Tools from the menu bar and roll down to Macros, and from the side menu that appears, select Record New Macro. This will bring up the Record New Macro dialog box. Type the name that you want to give to your new macro in the Macro Name text box. Macro names cannot contain any spaces. Next, select the name of the spreadsheet to which you want to attach the macro by selecting its name from the Store Macro In drop-down. If you do not change it, it will default to saving the macro into the current workbook. This is important only because a macro can only be run if it's attached to an open workbook or stored in the Personal Macro Workbook, which we'll discuss a little bit later. So if you would like it to be shared by all spreadsheets, you might put it into the Personal Macro Workbook. You can also create a custom keyboard shortcut to use in conjunction with the Control key by typing the desired shortcut key letter into the text box next to the Control Plus. If you decide to do this, make sure you don't overwrite an existing shortcut. For example, the shortcut character of P would be a bad choice, as Control plus P is already a keyboard shortcut for the print command. So if you aren't familiar with the keyboard shortcuts, it may be better if you don't assign one. When you're ready to start recording your actions, click OK. At this point, all of the keystrokes that you enter will now be recorded, so be careful what you do, as any mistakes that you make would also be included as part of your macro. If you do make a mistake, though, you can simply stop recording the macro and then delete the macro. Then you can try over. Notice as you're recording your macro that your mouse movement's severely restricted. Also, the Stop Recording toolbar will appear when you begin recording your actions. We use this toolbar to stop recording and to adjust the types of cell references used in the macro recording process. The types of reference that you make while you're recording a macro can be adjusted. So for example, let's say that when you began recording your macro, your active cell was A1. From there, you clicked into cell D1. When Excel records you doing that, it can either record that action as a relative reference or an absolute reference. That action, if recorded using relative references, would make the active cell move four cells to the right of whatever cell it was in when you started to play the macro back. If you record it in absolute terms, then it will always move to cell D1 from wherever you started the macro. You can adjust the types of referencing used in a macro by clicking the Relative Reference button. By default, Excel macros use absolute references. If you click this button, you'll switch to Relative Cell Referencing during your macro recording. The button should appear active or pressed in when it's on. You can click it again to switch back to Absolute Referencing when needed during or after recording. It's a toggle button and we click it to both turn it on and turn it off as far as the relative referencing in our macros. Now to stop recording, just click the big blue square stop recording button on the stop recording toolbar to stop recording the macro. It will automatically save your macro. 
Now we can play back the macro to repeat our actions that we just recorded at any time in the future. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.